So pine trees are a host tree, or their roots at least, uh, for a whole lot of different um, fungi. So what Woody and I have discovered here is these, what they're called slippery jacks. A beautiful little uh, mushroom. The, the most bitter, almost unpleasant part of the mushroom is, and I'll just move a bit closer so you can see. Have you got that there, Woody? Yep. Yeah. Um, is, is the slippery cap of the slippery jack. If you peel the cap, you actually have a beautiful, um, delicious mushroom underneath, particularly when they're young and solid like this. These mushrooms are, are called poor mushrooms. They don't have gills. When you forage for mushrooms, it's really good to cut the stipes off because you don't want to upset the mycelium. So you don't just rip them out. These are connected to a much bigger parent uh, organism. So Woody has just found a whole lot of slippery jacks here. He uh, said, hey dad, we can't forage from here because this is actually a drain that's coming off the road. So a whole lot of toxins uh, from cars come down and into this spoon drain. Now, the mushrooms are growing here because there's a bit of extra moisture, but this is a thing with foraging is to understand that um, drains off roads are not a safe place. There's a lot of biofuels today in cars and trucks. That biofuel is made from industrial crops which are laced with glyphosate. So there's a huge question about the toxicity of just how much more glyphosate's not just on our food, but it's in our environment. Uh, it's in our drains, etc. Hello, Zero. The other thing about this, these slippery jacks is they're quite different in um, color. So you might, compared to the ones we just foraged, which are quite a lot darker. So this is a variation and the variation can be in soil types. And you might think, well, that's a completely different mushroom. Um, but this is actually this very same mushroom. Hi, we've just found another little um, lovely edible mushroom. It grows in uh, eucalypt forests, but it grows around weeds. It comes up uh, near gorse or under gorse. It comes up, um, it loves, if you flatten down blackberry or have your goats eat down the blackberry, you will, um, uh, you will see a whole lot of these lovely little paracel mushrooms coming up. I'm not going to pick it because it's standing by itself. It needs to stay here to repopulate and make more children. A mushroom is a uh, sexual organ, a fruiting body. And so they're really important. They're connected to a much larger organism that lives year round. And just because we can't see that organism doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Paracel mushrooms are delicious. They've got a real fishy flavor. I've mentioned before that mushrooms are closer to animals in DNA. But there are some lookalikes that are uh, toxic. So there's big paracel mushrooms that grow in lawns and around the base of trees um, in nature strips and in um, uh, more sort of domesticated environments. And they're usually a lot larger. And they look very similar to this. They, there is a similar uh, beautiful burnt umbo or nipple. Um, the, the spotting that comes down from uh, the, the umbo across the cap. So again, it's an agaricus or a gill mushroom. Okay, so we've found one of my favorite mushrooms. It's called the lawyer's wig, and it's a type of ink cap. And these are absolutely delicious, but look at the, they deteriorate very quickly, and look at the black ink that's coming out of them. So you've got to eat these quite quickly because they, by this time, or well, maybe in about six or seven hours, maybe 12 hours, they'll just be completely black. They're really easy to identify. They look like lawyer's wigs. We're going to just take some of these. There's a whole lot here, and we'll definitely leave some so that they can keep producing next year. So we've now found uh, Woody's favorite mushroom. Uh, it's called the saffron milk cap, otherwise known as the pine mushroom. We like to call it the saffies or saffron milk cap. I'm just gonna clean that cap off. I'm gonna show you, we have a film on how to identify saffies, but there are some fundamentals and the most telling sign is the saffron or orange milk 
Um, look how vibrant that is. So that's one of the most telling signs. But I just want to, I've got a couple of other mushrooms here. One is this poisonous Pax. Uh, it's a Pax species of some form. Now, if you have a look at that, you might just think, oh, that's just an old version of that. So it's really important to know, but there's, there's no orange stain on the Pax. So that's an important identification. Um, they both, they're both growing in around pines. Um, and look, this even this one here, look, look at that. You could actually say, wow, they're pretty similar. Maybe this is just a bit older. This is a fly agaric. And if you don't cook this in the process that we showed in the last video, um, yeah, you could get quite sick. If you damage the gills underneath, they go, they copperize um, green. You've got a beautiful green. That doesn't mean they're, they've gone off or anything. That's another telling sign. And the stipes, I like to say, which are the stems, the stipes um, on these, they've got like splotches. That's another telling sign. One of, the one of the real joys of walking for our food is that when we're walking together, we're really uh, observant and we learn through that walking. The other thing is, is it connects us to other species. We've seen a whole lot of um, other than humans today, all going about doing their thing of looking for food. When we walk for our food, we are in that spirit of um, rigor and tenacity and observance and aliveness to the world. It's not just about what we can extract. It's actually about who we are in this local biome, how we interact, how we engage, what we can return, what we can take. It puts us into a whole set of different relationships, very different to say, handing over money for food. Mushrooms have a whole lot of microbes that our guts don't ordinarily get. So when we're handling these uh, mushrooms, we're getting microbes that are not on any other food. And so that's working its way into our skin micro microbiomes, which then works into our gut microbiomes, which then works, then affects how we are in our moods, in, our, in, in what we think. So I'm going to cook this up for lunch. We've got tomatoes from our garden, the wild mushrooms we just foraged. We're going to cook them in ghee from the, uh, the local cows. We've got our own bread. We make this loaf for $1.80 and we're going to actually give you a sourdough tutorial uh, video coming up soon. Okay, so we're going to toast, well this is our toaster too. So what we're looking at here is total divestment from corp corporate life. We've got walked for energy in terms of our wood heater, um, and a bit of salt that's been uh, gleaned from the Pink Lake by friends who have visited there. And I'm just gonna put a, a, a generous pinch or two over those. And I'm just going to put a splash of walked for elderberry vinegar.